Thanks a ton for everybody to join this second session uh, that we are running. The, today's session is all about rise of gaming creator, and uh, we have uh, you know Akshat with us. Unfortunately, Pooja couldn't join; she is not feeling well. Uh, let me start with a brief intro of Akshat, and then you know the format as last time is that we'll spend maybe first half of the session asking questions uh, led by Pratik and Anag. Uh, and then in the meantime, audiences, you know, audience can also keep on posting their question in the uh, Q&A group. Uh, we'll try to pick them up, and but we'll also uh, encourage people to come and ask their questions directly uh, to the panel folks. Uh, so Akshat is founder of uh, Nordbin. Uh, he started this company in 2015. Now it's part of Nazara, which is a listed entity. It's a esports entertainment platform. From what I could read, uh, largest in India, maybe number three in Southeast Asia. Uh, but actually, maybe for number benefit of the world. audience, uh, sorry, number three in the world. But that, <laughs> that's okay. Number three. Great, very nice. It is good to see that. Uh, but for the benefit of audience, I think it will be great uh, to get a one minute or two minute dump on what all Nordwin does. Uh, we might be aware yeah. of the properties, but may not be aware of the overall company and of then course. we can you know, um, the the modern gaming is uh, you know, of course uh, just doing a sound check you can hear me properly right yes yes excellent uh, so yeah i founded modern gaming in 2015 uh, i'm a gamer i always was a pro gamer and wanted to go ahead and do this cool thing called esports uh, unfortunately couldn't go ahead and get this cool thing called esports because esports is fundamentally the media rights and the media uh, play uh, and you can't go ahead and build a media play unless you build the fundamental building blocks of gaming and, and competitive esports. So we've spent the last five years going and building different properties uh, in esports, leagues, tournaments, uh, cups, uh, competition formats, etc. And uh, over time, we've done a good job uh, where uh, some of the best publishers in the world now work directly with us. Uh, and even to the tune of the guys who made PUBG, uh, the company called Crafton out of Korea, ended up taking a stake in Nordwin in uh, January of 2021. And uh, what does Nordwin do? We are a sports in entertainment powerhouse. Um, think of us as a company that builds multiple IPLs. Um, and that's the best way to go and give that example. Um, we build it for different sports, uh, while we can go and build it for BGMI or PUBG Mobile or Free Fire or, or other tournaments. We build it for Counter Strike. We build it for others. And if you think of fan, the fan, the sports fan in the end, in the center, we then also work on adjacencies of that fan. Uh, so very recently, we acquired a company's assets called OML that does things like the YouTube Fan Festival, which you might have heard of, the NF7 Weekender that you might have heard of, and a bunch of gaming creators like the Tanmay Bhatt, uh, Samir Raina, uh, and so on and so forth. So. Uh, to us, talent is is extremely intrinsic to what we do, um, both at a player level and at a caster level and at a content creator level. And uh, so with them, we built on one edge is creators, so on one edge is content, another edge is media platforms. We are kind of in the middle working with the fans to go ahead and create content and media revenue that we can go ahead and build up. That is awesome. And uh, Akshat, in the context of IPL, uh, you do not own the distribution of the content you are creating. You actually partner with all the YouTubes and the TikToks and the uh, and uh, of the world and distribute all the content everywhere. Like the IPL, I'm exactly like the IPL. I'm exactly like the IPL. I'm I license the IPL is a licensed property from the BCCI, which is the federation. In gaming, the federation is normally a person called or a company called the publisher. So you go ahead and license a tournament from the publisher. Uh, you call it, say, the IPL, and then you go ahead and build it, and then you go ahead and broad, uh, offer media rights of it to different partners over different tenures. Uh, Sony takes it for the first cycle, the Star took it for the second cycle, and we'll see who takes it next month for the next tenure cycle. Nice. Awesome. And and since you have been, uh, just, just kicking it off, Akshat, from there, since you have been a gamer earlier and you have experimented with a lot of things over the past many years, uh, you would have the best vantage point to explain how has the gaming ecosystem, game content creation ecosystem evolved in the country over the past seven, eight years, decade. Uh, and this, this, I'm also keeping in mind that the type of games and 
type of tools have also changed. We'd love to get a download from you on how has the ecosystem changed, and then let's dive deeper on. Um, well, so th- fundamentally, the question we are trying to go ahead and address is how has the gaming, how has the creator ecosystem changed over the last decade? Right, um, gaming is just a manifest one manifestations of content. We've seen explosions in anything that the youth and, and and millennials care about, whether it be music, whether it be comedy, whether it be food, whether it be beauty. Uh, we've seen a, a big explosion of music creators earlier, then we saw gaming creators, then we saw beauty creators. Uh, so you'll keep on seeing multiple creators uh, as, uh, as content creators keep on coming up. And I think we, this will never stop. Uh, people care about their social media stars. I'm sorry for the background noise. Uh, welcome to being sitting in an airport. Uh, <laughs> they're just randomly in a silent airport. They're telling about a good uh, gate change. So, uh, so we've seen this gaming content creators space evolve just like that. You know, it started off being that elitist thing, which is uh, the English being the core language that that people used to go and communicate in and create content in and I think that 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 wall was breached about five years ago, four years ago, where uh, content, the predominant language for gaming content creators became Hindi. And English is now the fourth language, uh, second being Marathi, third, second being uh, Marathi, third, uh, second being Tamil, third, third being Marathi, fourth being Bangla, fifth is English. Right? So, so English is in, like every other GEC that you would go ahead and say, star movies is, is not, not not a big distribution channel, right, is it? Um, and then we see that with the numbers or even of Netflix and everyone else who wants to go ahead and put on different content. I think uh, content and uh, hence gaming and content creators are following the, the reach of power uh, pretty much the same way as it is in Indian game. Very interesting. And Akshat, one evolution that I would, I have, th- I have seen is also on the game type. The games that people were playing five, six years back were very different from the games that people are playing today. Uh, so what what are game streamers doing today? Uh, what types of games are popular? Yeah, well, Pratik, I, differ, I differ with you on that. Richard. I think the format that they played earlier was Counter-Strike. And now they find, find and something that is cheaper, better to play Counter-Strike on, which is on your phone called PUBG Mobile. India is basically a shooting country. Um, <laughs> Don't get me started why we don't have a variety on this. Our, our biggest games are Free Fire and uh, PUBG Mobile and Counter-Strike and Valorant. Um, uh, I'd love to go ahead and see more. And it's they're not small, but they're not super big. But I'd love to see more Ludo popping or more cricket popping. Uh, those are genres that are very Indian. Sorry, some people are kind of reached out to yeah. Makes sense. Uh, makes sense. So, so um, India has been watching. India loves the shooting games. Never changed. Like uh, picking up from that, like how do you see that India versus the world? Like in India, the flavor is different, right? Like mobile gaming kind of dominates over PCs. There is like probably more casual midcore gaming than hardcore gaming, and. Uh, Culturally, also there has been skepticism. Uh, parents not really uh, like encouraging like gaming as a career that has never, in fact, been an option. So, like there are multiple differences when it comes to India versus no. what's going on no. abroad. Oh. No, it's the same. I don't, go find an American kid, a parent that says they want their kid to be a gamer. I'll I'll give you as much of a prize on a percentage basis, which is there. So, no, no, no parents across the world really care for their kid to be a gamer. None, like zero. It doesn't matter whether they're in Sweden or Japan or Paris or London or New York. Uh, it, it is, it's strange to have your kid going and saying, I want a career in gaming as an esports player. Uh, to be a creator is a very different question, right? I think creators as an economy has been, uh, especially during the and the lockdown across the world, has been uh, has a has a very strong breakout moment uh, because fundamentally everyone sitting in front of a Zoom. Uh, uh, and even if we are doing right now, aren't you all creators? This is being live stream right now. And now you are a creator and I'm a creator and Rahul is a creator. We are creating this build for creators content. Now, so whether it is a live stream content and that is interactive or not, it's just nomenclature and, and ways to go and look at 
whether we are all creators. So I think being a creator and having a career from having a virtual presence in that has had a much stronger breakout. If we talk about esports, um, Japan's always been a console country. America's always been a console country. Europe's always been a PC country, uh, PC location. Uh, India has been, India, Southeast Asia has been mobile. It's it's where we start going and having social interactions on this uh, tomato, tomato. I think the world of convergence is, is actually here. If you look at the way uh, Epic uh, with their Unreal Engine has been working on, you now have games like Rocket League, Sideswipe, that is on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, Nintendo Switch, mobile phone, live at the same time, you're playing the same game. Cross platforms. So you can be, I can I can be playing on a mobile against you playing on your PlayStation Live. Right? And then more and more games will start going and have unity of this and, and Microsoft's busy buying uh gaming <laughs> gaming companies left, right, and center to be putting on that. We are seeing every indication of convergence coming. Uh and to me, the format is just what is convenient right now. You'll, the same way you watch cricket in a 2020 format or one-day format and a test match format, you will have different immersion levels that are all there. I think PC gaming will remain as the ultimate test for you because it will require the highest precision and highest uh, uh, fidelities and the highest uh, eyes, eye movement, et cetera, because you can just actually tap the screen fast, tap your keyboard faster than you can tap your screen. Uh, it's just faster and then and, and esports is fundamentally a speed competition right so if you have to have speed and and then you want to have a very high level cap of speed then you need a device that can actually go ahead and capture that the most but different formats it, it i think all will coexist and when we talk about convergence uh does this also mean that uh, there'll be more monetization uh, pools or avenues for gaming creators in india of course 100%. and uh, what could that be like let's say beyond brand partnerships or ad uh, splits that they might be getting from streaming? Play to earn. I think play to earn will be the largest disintermediation of uh, customer acquisition cost in Google that is coming up in the world. I think play to earn guilds, which will go ahead and um, take money from publishers to go ahead and build both customer acquisition and retention for a certain fee will be one of the largest one, largest uh, ways for gaming creators. But what is a gaming creator? He's a community of people who he follows, right? So he's an influencer enough to go ahead and say, I have a I don't know, 2 million followers, and I can go ahead and get them to click this button. And some of them to go ahead and click this button. And if that is the case, that's an omni-channel network that is wait, waiting to go ahead and uh, offer a certain amount of customer acquisition cost and a retention cost with a sort of paid on model, which you don't have to pay a Google or a Facebook. So I think creators will lead the play to earn movement. So that you, you mean as an affiliate? Is that what you meant? No, no, as a, no as, a, as a direct channel, Rahul, like, uh, okay, uh, deep dive, double click on this. Typical app economy ecosystem, customer acquisition cost plus, plus uh, customer retention cost, whether you're using content for customer retention or uh, esports for uh, customer retention or transactions for customer retention, whatever you do. Um, and let's throw some numbers here. $4 customer acquisition cost, $1 per month to go ahead and retain the customer on a 12-month life cycle is a $16 cost of customer, right? And then you, your LTV, uh, uh, hopefully it's better than 16 uh, for you to have a uh, cost economics uh, mathematical model that is there. Uh, however, uh, when we all look at the day 28, day 28, day 15, day 60 retention rates, and most of the time you see this drop that is constantly coming. And so you have a leaky bucket problem and most private equity well, uh, most most money uh, that is being spent is actually to go ahead and increase the top of the funnel, especially if you have LTV mechanics actually gone and solved. But mm -hmm. most of the people, if you look at a percentage allocation of money and an expense that has been set, spent here is on third-party platforms for customer acquisition cost, uh, CPI, CPM models that you're doing. Uh, and one company called Google takes most of that money away. Google Play Store, whether they take 30% from your transaction cost is it is is much more subsequent for much more some much more subsequent to the fact that you they take a certain amount of money to actually get that installed done. And now whether you're doing your install through a TV campaign or through a ad campaign or a performance campaign, you are fundamentally spending this money outside what is called your stakeholder ecosystem. And your stakeholder ecosystem is you and your community. Uh, and and uh, when you're paying Google, 
as a third party service provider to go and get you that community. Uh, and I, if, it, if I change that play to one model by going and saying, hey, customer, I'll actually pay you one and a half dollars every month to play my game. Hmm. Right? I'm not going to play Google. I'm not going to pay anyone else. I'm going to pay you to play my game. And hopefully, hope, so I'm, I'm solving two problems with this. Lower customer acquisition first, because I don't have to go and play upfront to anyone. It's all performance based. And the second one is I'm actually solving the problem of retention because now this person has an incentive to put in coming back every month because you have a pay to earn model, uh, which is that. And you hopefully you have the game mechanic of the dopamine loop that is there for fun is or whatever is still active to go, which is that. So you've actually solved a fundamental problem, both of retention and customer acquisition first, which was outside your coherent ecosystem. And it was going to Google or to any other third party and you and your community are there. And what is the community, but people who love you. And if you have influencers that are going and leading that community and to have certain amount of the game, you can then go to them. And if your community has 10,000, so I, if I'm a influencer or a content creator, I can go ahead and say, fine, pay me $10,000 a month. I will give you 6,000 customers every month who will go ahead and keep playing with you. And I have a play to earn model. Now, whether I distribute that as equally or I go over and take a cut, it doesn't matter. Skills, communities, cohorts, creators, which are uh, some homogeneous gathering of like-minded people will go out and disintermediate the entire ad acquisition model of Google in the next 10 years. Good stuff. And Akshat, the, 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 the play to earn example is interesting. Because also because we we often think that gaming in many verticals has been the uh, has been the force of uh, of pushing boundary uh, to for for a lot of things like video technology whether it's monetization whether it's uh, a streaming game streaming became popular before anything else uh, and and play to one is a very good new example where gaming is perhaps leading the way for telling the world on how to how should creators monetize. Any, anything else you have seen that creators in other verticals should learn from gaming creators? Well, the entire me show is what it's affiliate marketing for content creators that are going and setting up their own label. And eventually, if you think of Walmart uh, being a guy who used to go and buy, uh, run his bicycle and go ahead and do volumetric buying for there, and then uh, the free cash flow that he used to go and get out of that was the one that he could go and do. And then uh, extrapolate that to an Amazon model where uh, the biggest wealth for Amazon besides AWS is being created on uh, in-house labels. Then the ability for content creators to have in-house labels that are on that are their brands will be the biggest other extrapolation that you can put into. Why go ahead and sell affiliate marketing for Amazon when you can go ahead and get people to go ahead and use your own merch? You have to have certain sales scale for it. But haven't we seen that a uh, Kim Kardashian or anyone or a uh, George Clooney launching his own tequila line is what? It's 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 white label, right? It's 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 your in-house label that a content creator or an influencer creates around his own brand to go and build something out. And we've seen uh, most of the what very as soon as the influencer realizes that they are the brand and not just the channel is not the aha moment that a lot of influencers should should see. Very, very good. And it takes money. It yeah. takes time. It takes patience. It takes the ability to not take the one 10 lakhs a month that you're actually going at and getting to not endorse someone else, but to just endorse yourself. Yeah, of course. 100%. I think uh, it, you know someone needs to read or show a little more by going and saying, yeah, get that, get that 10 lakhs, get that 20 lakhs, get your, get your, get your enjoyment for the first two, two three years of life. Uh, when you're a content creator. And, and then once you want to go ahead and build something that is truly wealth creation is then when, when value is being created. Mm. And actually one question uh, as an outsider, like in the gaming creator world, let's say I'm a great gamer, you know, I'm assuming there's a great chance I can become a creator and create a large following. Are there any other things that people do to become a gaming creator? Like, there's this notion of being a great gamer very important uh, to no. become a creator in the gaming world? No, 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 no. Um, what's the best way I can go and say? Um, you can be a great social media influencer 
and mm. not a great actor and you can be a great academy or a film fair winning actor and be a really bad influencer uh and we've seen that right so we've seen that with some of the khans being better on one or platform and the other one you've seen uh movie stars which is there um uh, i think i think it depends on what your art is if you're a competitive person focus on being competitive and maybe you'll also be an influencer and if you're a great influencer be a, be the influencer and the content creator and if you're a great competitive gamer that's a just a secondary quality and that's a, another skill set that you have be true to who you are if if you're if you're being super competitive then be super competitive if you're being super entertaining which is there i don't think sanmay bhat ever wants to go and play the world cup in fact on this question i was seeing that uh, ayush uh, who runs tourna fest is a very interesting esports organizing platform uh, he has also joined so let me actually bring him to the panel Hi everyone. Hi Yush. Yeah, Yush. Hey, uh, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Of uh, course, we know you, but uh, to the audience. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so, hi guys. Uh, I'm Yush. I'm the founder of Tournafest. So, we at Tournafest uh, provides a platform to gaming tournaments organizer as well as players so that they can seamlessly organize and participate in any gaming tournaments. So. we as a like company have the vision ki let's say who wants to dive into this gaming tournament space should i have a platform to visit and we control the whole journey from very start to very end and provides and help him in every way possible okay thanks so i wish would love to because uh, you've been working with uh, some of the esports communities of late and you're seeing some creators uh, create interesting discord groups and other ways to engage with them directly uh what's the difference between a gamer and a gaming creator like what are the key skill set differences or key interest differences uh so uh, according to me let's say if we talk about a gamer and a gaming creator so gamer is someone who is like totally into gaming and he totally focuses into competitive sports right while uh, if we talk about a gaming creator he knows how to manipulate the audience right let's say if we talk about tanmay but he also plays games he also plays like some some day let's say if he plays a game for a month or two then he'll become somewhat at a very pro level or a, he will attain some skills right but he will not be a gamer he'll be a content creator because he know how to entertain people he know how to uh retain those audience that he has right like he has like 2 3 million subscriber and consistently he is getting like 1 or 2 million views on his videos which actually shows ki he he has the ability to retain the audience while a gaming creator uh, while a gamer uh, actually is like very much motivated into the game uh, he don't know actual skills like to how to interact and most most of the gamers that we have interacted with are very introvert like they are just kind of a guy who sits in his room and continuously play games all day right so yeah these are the two factors and i think uh, if we talk about esports in general right so most of the gamers that actually dive into this creator space uh tend to leave the gaming space like or the esports space we have some examples in the industry as well right like we can take example of mortal or Uh, scout or etc so earlier they were like very into e sports but when they started interacting with community growing their youtube channel and getting into this field so now uh, they don't have that much amount of skill or they are not able to retain themselves into this competitive speed, space right so in order to gain something you have to lose something so that's the trade off and, and are you when you are seeing the your gaming creators create content what are what what are the tools they are, they are using what are the challenges you see with them that if you ask a gaming creator what are your biggest challenges what would he say and uh, and what are the solutions he is using for that uh so firstly let's say if someone is into gaming and wants to create content so firstly he tries to record the gaming videos uh, upload the montages and see what the audience reacts uh, so if the audience reacts to that he are he is very good at headshots or kill shots then he starts uh, dive into showing his face or using the voices right so for that uh, initially everyone starts with the mobile uh, mobile streaming setup 
they use uh, platforms like Turnip or Omelet Arcade, etc. And after that, uh, once they grow like enough audience or have that money of buying a PC, then they sort of set up a whole PC setup uh, for their YouTube or Twitch channel. So like everyone has to evolve according to the way audience, their audience like. So if we talk about hardcore gamers, they generally come on the stream and just start playing the competitive game, right? So they play like 1v4 kind of matches where, uh, where they, they are sort of playing and playing against four other team members or four or other squads, right? And sort of killing them in single-handedly. So people like these type of content. And if we talk about other type of category where a person is sort of at a middle or a intermediate level, uh, then it's mostly the entertaining skills that a person has, right? Got it. Like I had a question, I think would love to get both your views, Akshat and Ayush. Uh, like what are creator-led communities in gaming? The communities which are running on, let's say, Discord or Telegram. And people who are watching, let's say, YouTube or Twitch, the live streams, uh, are they different from the people who are watching, like who are joining these communities? Like do does the community-led approach and the broadcast-oriented approach, does it appeal to essentially different audience sets? No. Akshat, do you want to go first on this? No, they don't. Uh, they're exactly the same. I think once is, one is a subset. Um, Discord is a higher level of evolution and an engagement level that you want to go ahead and do with your... Like, uh, think of YouTube as being the modern TV that is there. You're watching something, it's running in the background or wherever you, you are there. The next first level of evolution would be you'd actually go ahead and type something in chat. The next level of evolution would be you would actually go ahead and subscribe to that person. The third level of evolution would be you'll actually start giving up super chat or some kind of a monetary transaction, which is there. Only when you got hooked, um, let's say you've gone and engaged with a content creator for over 10, 15, 20 hours, is where you feel you have a sense of belonging. You know some of the people who are chatting, you know what this person stands for, is where you'll now click on the Discord link and then go ahead and become a person who's here. Uh, remember, Discord is an additional sink of time that you now need to go ahead and spend besides watching this person's streams to go ahead and spend on it. And if this person is a streamer who streams three times a week or six o'clock to eight o'clock, as an example, when you want to go and get your fix on the other times when he's not streaming, is where you use Discord to engage with other like minded fellows around. And once in a while, the, the, the owner, the content creator itself, drops down in, in Discord and then has a chat and builds a better level of engagement with you, which fulfills the cyclical loop of you coming back and watching more of his content. Interesting. Are you any different views? Yeah, so I completely agree with Akshat. Uh, but what I have seen these days uh, is that key, the content creators uh, are actually becoming entrepreneurs these days. Like if we talk about Mr. Beast, we all know Mr. Beast, right? So he has started a lot of uh, food chains, which is like Mr. Beast burgers, or he has also collaborated with different brands, started started uh, doing his own merchandise and other stuff, right? So everyone in the creator industry is doing that way. So YouTube or Twitch is a way to get audience, but everyone started to feel that we need a place where we can engage with this audience, right? Where we can sell our stuff or uh, connect with other brands or do the affiliate marketing thing, right? That's when uh, this Discord boom came into India, where every creator started running their own communities on Discord, getting their subscribers engaged in the community because it actually restricts a person, right? Let's say if I join uh, Discord community of Tanmay Bhatt, then uh, I'll be interacting with other community members and it gives me a place where I belong, right? So, and later on, like this... Uh, this this will take shift into crypto where uh, every creator will start launching their own cryptocurrencies and uh, sort of monetizing in different way, right? Because what we feel ki are uh, everyone wants to become uh, like entrepreneur or any any kind of that, but these creators have to do everything by themselves, right? When they get to when they overcome this type of phenomena where they sort of uh, builds up the team and automate this whole process and dive into other fields. That's that's when uh, 
these creators start to become uh, and set up a business of their own, right? So, yeah. Got it. Got it. Let's also, uh, you know, open up the room for audience questions. And there are a few already on the, in the Q&A group. So others can also type in there. Uh, and Yana, you can pick up folks. Sure. So uh, Siddharth uh, has an interesting question. I think this is for you, Akshar, uh, about your point on day to one. Siddharth, I'm allowing you to talk. Why don't you ask? Thanks, Anag. Uh, no, so where? Where the question really came is from the success of Axie Infinity and the likes. Uh, so play to earn looks like it's taken over the world. Has this been explored previously? Because clearly the benefits of lower customer acquisition cost and higher retention are there. Uh, so has it already been experimented in the past? If not, did recently something change that why these models have really taken off? Play to earn is basically a discounting or an incentive loyalty program that you're running, right? Um, and if you go ahead and devolve it down to a loyalty scheme where it has a which has a sign-on bonus, let's just say, I don't know, a Jet Airways card or a Vistara or a, any frequent flyer program, it's there. You go ahead and um, you pay money to get a credit card to... Uh, and, and you pay that person a certain number of miles or points or free tickets to keep on being a customer and a loyalist of yours. At that level, play to earn is basically a, a much more evolved, uh, much, 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 much more evolved uh, loyalty program that you're running. The What really changed in the past is while it was uh, on a web 2.0 on a centralized basis uh, on the ability of a blockchain to go ahead and actually run this on, from a two. Uh, by removing all these uh, intermediates, you can actually now just figure who's the right person to go ahead and give this. Uh, and that that incentive is now tradable. Plus, there is a store of value that is there. So if you looked at how Solana and every other uh, Ethereum itself is now looking at uh, not just being a transactional ledger, a uh, distributed transactional ledger, but also to be a store of value itself. Uh, that has been one of the biggest changes which is there because uh, what the power of Axie Infinity is not the fact that you can actually just go and, and, and play to earn, but also that uh, um, the much larger ticket sizes lets people go ahead and stake assets that are actually the earning assets. And then multiple people are coming together to spend $80,000 on an item that actually goes, lays golden eggs, right? So the ability to stake and the ability to go ahead and get into assets which are distributed and on a distributed ledger did not exist in the past. Now, uh, uh, the closest example was a zamindar that could go ahead and buy a house and then get farmers to go ahead and build the house for him. And that was at feudal age that you, that was what was created. Um, and then you couldn't go ahead and transfer that very well because most of those assets were locked down. And here, those, those are much more distributed. So that's one of the big reasons, um, both at a store of value uh, and at a store of asset and also a transactional ledger that is distributed is what the big change has happened. Interesting. Now that we have opened the Pandora's box of Web3, I think most <laughs> questions will come around Web3 in gaming. On that note, uh, let me uh, get up uh, Manit. He is running a gaming studio. He had a question. I will just go ahead and close that off, which is there. Don't believe that it has taken over the world. You know, I think uh, echo chambers are, are real. Um, nothing has been taken over. Nothing has happened. Real money, real transaction, real value. Uh, we are still sitting here. Uh, anything that is being built is much more intangible, which is there. Fads are a thing. Uh, NFTs was the coolest thing in the last year. Crypto was another thing uh, six months ago. Don't 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 overbelieve in it. Believe in the fundamentals. You are building stuff either for vanity in gaming. You build for vanity, or you build for fun, or you build for competition. You only build for one of those three levers. You do not build anything or anything else except those three things. Vanity, fun, or com competition. If you, and, and LTVs are a thing, value is a thing, profitability is a thing, investments are a thing. Uh, uh, don't believe that, that that anything that you guys will go ahead and build just because it slows. Like the number of times I go ahead and get uh, pitches that I'm, I also happen to be an angel investor and, and we look at, with Stellaris, we go ahead and look at some, 
some really funky deals. Uh, but <laughs> the number of times in a, in a day I get, I have a Web 3.0 platform that has based on fungible or non-fungible tokens. That is a platform for gaming, for content creators with AI and ML, which is there. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> so let's what? No. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Be real. Hmm. Some, some, someone smart said this to me once that we all underestimate uh, things that can happen in the long run and overestimate things that can happen in the short run. So yep. this is a perfect example for that. Yeah, Manit, why don't you ask your question? Sure. Uh, thanks, guys. So, so I just run a small gaming studio. So we have games like uh, Ludo, Snakes and Ladder and basics basic 2d games yeah can you hear me yeah okay yeah. Yeah. so we have we have basic 2d games and now that uh, we are uh, at a point where we can create in game assets even in small games or have or connect them to their games uh, we can have their uh, in game currencies or have a platform which can have currencies so i'm still not able to figure out how we can monetize uh, all these free games that are uh, on Play Store, where in India the ad revenue is very little compared to the number of users that are coming in is way more. Like there would be games who have, uh, in my experience, 30,000 uh, daily active users. And these guys are uh, barely earning anything per month. So if you guys have any thoughts on this. I have personally seen, uh, uh, this is just anyone who's going and building a, uh, absolutely ad supported uh, revenue model in the digital economy of, of the world today uh, is using it as a CV audition system. Uh, you want to go ahead and show people that, that you can go ahead and build, you can go ahead and acquire customers, you can go ahead and do whatever. And hopefully someone invests in your company as a developer, someone goes and licenses your tech, someone goes and gives you a job, someone goes and, and, and works with you. Uh, so, uh, Creator economy, and since this, the topic of this is, is built for creators, I'll give you an example. Uh, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, uh, any of those systems that are all there, um, the engine, the algorithm is the one which is showing you the next swipe, right? You just keep swiping and the next thing comes. You're not necessarily looking at this. How many times have you ever gone, stopped at a reel, clicked on the person which is there, looked four of their reels, joined their, gone to their YouTube channel, subscribe to their YouTube channel, and then come back. No, you don't do it. You just maybe click the join button at the end of the reel, and then you go to the next reel. So the algorithm is the one that is that that is the king. It's, and, and they'll show you what, what works for whoever that works for. And that's the thing. YouTube content, content creators make no money from shorts. They're literally a CB a way for people to go ahead and for the engine to go ahead and hopefully get you some kind of attraction to your channel. That's it. It's an advertising play at all. Um, and it's the same thing with free to uh, free to play apps and ad supported apps, which is there. It's, it's, if you're building for India, the CPMs will never go ahead and make a two lines meet ever. So that you just do it to go ahead and make sure someone loves what you do and uh, an international studio goes and gives you some great projects to do. But if you could go ahead and build an app that has great retention or great traction or great engagement levels or a great community, those are the things that are much more valuable than the revenue that you've actually made with it. Interesting. Great. No, this is amazing, Akshat and Ayush. I I, you know, the the fun part of not asking, not being allowed to ask too many questions in between is that I get to ask the last two questions. Uh, so let me ask this question to both of you, uh, specifically for uh, Akshat. I assume you have kids. Is that fair? How many hours a day are they allowed to play games? Uh, my daughter plays uh, age-appropriate games. Uh, she's a very good gamer. She's mm. seven years old. She gets to go ahead and uh, choose between gaming and Netflix and uh, and any other content that she wants to go and. So we limit her by screen time, but we let her play whatever she wants on the screen time. And then she tends to use games more than passive viewing because she just finds it more interesting. 
which is basically the answer of interactive entertainment, right? Gaming is fundamentally interactive entertainment. So I make her choose, do you want to go ahead and watch Peppa Pig or do you want to go ahead and play Bejeweled? Then it's so a choice. We, we finally found a parent who is okay kids playing games, right? So that's that's a great outcome of this session. If we, do, if we disable our kids from playing video games, we, we disable them. Like everything in life, cell, like phones, when, when our parents were growing on physical phones, uh, people used to go and like, you know, things change, but nothing changes at all. Our parents, <laughs> our grandparents, biggest crib without my parents, uh, my, my grandparents are 90, uh, my parents are 65, uh, was they were on their phone all the time. <laughs> nothing changes, right? <laughs> we still see that our kids and our families are on the phone all the time. The phone changed. True. And maybe Ayush, uh, given that you're much younger, how many hours were you able to get out of your parents uh, as far as gaming per day was concerned? Yeah, uh, in my case, actually, uh, <laughs> like it was, it was pretty difficult for me. Like uh, when I was like in my school, daytime we have school, in the evening we have coaching, preparing for IITJ and all. And frankly speaking, I got time when I was in my college. So like the whole first year we spent like every day playing games from day and night because we <laughs> felt that freedom has finally come to us. And yeah. I, I, but, I, but, I, Ayush was perfectly in acting. Baskar Pagle will come to us. Great. Thanks. Thanks. There is so much pent up uh, <laughs> frustration <laughs> and there is so much call of duty in the first year especially. Yeah. <laughs> Very true, very true. Now, but on this note, uh, thanks both Akshat and Ayush for taking your time, sharing your insights and thanks to everybody in the audience uh, for patiently listening uh, and asking some interesting questions. Uh, so hopefully get to see you guys. Lovely to be here. Same here. Bye. Thank you, Akshat. Thank you, Ayush. Thank you very much for joining. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. And see you next month. We'll be back with another session. <laughs>